This video is sponsored by The Home Depot. Okay, who was gonna tell me that my shirt matched my bedding? But I'm not mad about it, so I'm just gonna go with the flow. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Lone Fox. I hope you're having an amazing day today. I'm really excited for today's video, actually, because I thought I would just go ahead and push myself out of my comfort zone and just test out my woodworking skills. And in no way am I saying I am Miss Rachel Metz. She is the queen of woodworking here on YouTube. There are a ton of really incredible woodworkers here on YouTube, and I've always been one kind of intimidated by woodworking. I actually did a video a long time ago with Rachel, and she kind of introduced me to using power tools. I know nothing about a power tool. Done. You did it. <laughs> Professional. No. Oh my gosh. That's the first wood cut I've ever cut. Really? If a wood chuck could cut wood. <laughs> And I figured today we would go ahead and dive headfirst into a couple of furniture pieces that we are gonna be creating fully from scratch with the help from today's video sponsor, which is The Home Depot. I love working with The Home Depot, and whenever I think of any larger scale DIY project, I immediately think of The Home Depot. That's where I'm always headed to to get any of my supplies, whether it be, you know, wood, cement mix, paint, really anything, home decor. If you have a home improvement project that you are working on, The Home Depot definitely has what you need for that project. And not only do they have everything you need, they really have so many capabilities, which make it super simple for a shopper like you or I to just get the items that you need and move on with your projects. Starting off with delivery, they have free delivery on over a million items, which is totally crazy. And on top of that, they actually offer a 90 day refund policy. So if you have something, you haven't opened it, it's untouched, you can go ahead and bring it back for up to 90 days after you purchase it, which I think is great. They also have so many incredible fulfillment services, including buy online, pick up in store, meaning that you can shop online. And then once your order is ready, you can go ahead and pick it up in the store. They have pickup lockers where you can also order and then you know your items are stored in a locker. You can go pick them up. And last but not least, they have curbside pickup, which is my personal favorite thing in the entire world. I will shop anywhere and if they have curbside pickup, you bet I'm driving my car there and they're putting it in my car and I'm driving away. I love that it's just so convenient and easy to do, especially with a lot of larger scale items. I have used curbside pickup from Home Depot multiple times, like when I got that power washer and a tool that I think is super useful, which you can find on their website and also within the app. If you do not have the Home Depot app, by the way, you guys, you have to download it. It is incredible, but they have something called the project calculator. And this actually lets you kind of go in and there's a lot of different types of projects that you can calculate out, whether it be a tile work project, a drywall project, a fencing project. They have a ton of different options and it allows you to calculate out how much tools and materials prior to having to go and purchase it. So let's say you don't really know how much tile you need for a space. You input your dimensions. They tell you how much of the specific tile you need and how much it's going to cost. So it makes it kind of a no-brainer when it comes to DIYing and you know exactly what you need and exactly how much it's going to be in the end. So I think that's a great useful tool as well. So all in all, the Home Depot shopping experience is just very, very seamless. They make it so simple and so many different ways to get the products you need for your next home improvement project. If you have not already, make sure to download the Home Depot app and also check out their website. I'll have links in the description box below for you guys, but let's go ahead. I'm actually going to head into store this time because I have to pick out colors and sizes and things. And for me, I just like to see that stuff visually in person. So we're going to go ahead and head over to the Home Depot store and check out what we can get for these projects because we're going to do some woodworking projects and create some furniture and I'm hoping that they're going to turn out really cute and fun. And yeah, let's put our woodworking skills to the test. I want to share with you guys how easy it is to find something. So if you download the Home Depot app, which is my favorite app ever, you can literally just search chisel, which is what I'm currently looking for. Then it shows you all of your options, but it also shows you where in the store it's located. So aisle 12, bay 16, I'm gonna head over there to see all the chisel options. I got all of my supplies. They're in the garage at the moment. I pulled all the cars out. So I have a little workshop. My dad actually bought me this little table here for my saw for Christmas. And I'm finally able to use it. This is actually from the Home Depot as well, which is really nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of the wood for our first project. I think I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start with a more simple project to start. And then we're gonna work into the more advanced ones. Now, keep in mind guys, I am also pretty new to woodworking. I really only own a miter saw, a jigsaw, and a drill. So those are my three tools I'm gonna be using for all of these projects and of course everything's going to be linked below but let's go ahead and dive on into our first DIY. 
Starting off with a super simple project, we are gonna be creating a plant stand. And I always find myself purchasing these for room makeovers or any project I might need one for, but I'm gonna share with you how easy it is to create your very own. So I started off by measuring the width of my vessel and I added one inch to that measurement. You're gonna to wanna to cut two pieces of wood that are to this size. And the wood I'm using here, guys, is a select pine board. It's a one by two, so it's a little bit of a nicer quality than your traditional uh, just raw pine wood. And I'm also gonna go ahead and cut a couple pieces which you're going to use as legs. So I cut four pieces at 20 inches each. And keep in mind, guys, if you buy an eight foot piece of wood, you can create this entire planter with the one piece. So we ended up with four 20 inch sections and two seven inch sections. So working with our seven inch section first, you're gonna find the middle point. And then from the middle point, you're gonna place on top your second piece of wood and just go ahead and align it up in the middle there and then draw a line or a guide on the left and right side and go ahead and extend that line across. You're going to be doing it on the top here as I'm doing at the moment and we're going to be basically chiseling this out and then flipping it over to the side as well you're gonna to want to transfer those marks that you created over to the side and you're gonna be transferring them about halfway down the piece of wood and essentially this is basically going to be telling us how deep we want our cut to be and how wide we want our cut to be so we're gonna be creating a notch here I'm using a clamp to go ahead and clamp it to my work surface and I'm also using a jigsaw and the first cut I'm going to be creating is the cut up to our middle point that we did on the the left and the right lines that we marked. So just cutting right up to that middle point line there. And then what you're going to want to do next is go ahead and create a series of cuts right next to each other. This is basically going to be loosening up our wood and allowing us to then go and easily hammer out those sections or chisel them out if we need to go ahead and do that as well. So I hammered them out to start, then using a chisel, which I picked up at the Home Depot as well. I'm just going in and just cleaning up this notch that we created. This is actually very, very simple and super useful when it comes to woodworking because you can use these notches in a ton of different ways. So here I am going in and chiseling out the second piece. You can totally take your time with this and just make sure it's nice and clean. You can also use some sandpaper, but the notches will allow it to interlock like this, and this is going to be the base of our planter. So that's the hardest part for sure. Next, what I'm doing is going in with my leg pieces, and I'm going to measure down how much I want the wood to actually show at the top of the pot. So I opted for five inches, so I measured that down, created a guideline as shown here, and then I'm using some wood glue to go ahead and glue our notched pieces of wood to the left and right legs so these are going to be glued as shown here now I actually did glue them above the line I was supposed to glue them below the line and I realized it after the fact and also do not forget when gluing your second one to flip it over because you're gonna want these to interlock together Once your two halves are dry, I'm going in with a small little drill bit to drill a pilot hole on the left side and right side of our legs. These are going directly into that center support that we created. And then I'm screwing in a two and a half inch long screw to go ahead and just make sure this is nice and held together. You could probably get away with just the wood glue, but I added the screw. I also did go ahead once this was fully constructed and I liked the way that it looked, I did go back in with a little bit of wood filler and I just covered up those screw sections. Just make sure to drive the screw lower than the top of the wood that way you could fill it in then you're going to sand away any excess and remove any of your pencil lines on this wooden piece and then just go in with your favorite stain of choice or paint i opted for a golden pecan by rustoleum i believe as i really like the wood grain and the light wood color so you can see the top one is stained with golden pecan and the bottom one is still left raw but the great thing about this project is that it only costs nine dollars all you need is a couple screws and your piece of wood and you're good to go I am so happy with how this project turned out. I wanted to build a bookshelf, so I came up with this idea to go ahead and do some sides atop to the bookshelf, but then create these cubes on the inside and a couple of shelves to connect the cubes to the opposite side of the bookshelf, which you're gonna see what I'm talking about in a second here, but I used three two by 10 by eight foot pine boards for this project, and that's all the wood you're gonna go ahead and need. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut the dimensions for the sides and the top. Now, I just went ahead and cut one of the eight foot boards in half for the sides so they're 48 inches tall each and then for the top I believe I went in with a 30 inch piece so I did a top and bottom cut at 30 inches. 
You might also realize that the miter saw I'm using does not go ahead and cut through the entire width of this board, so I had to cut down, flip it over, trace the line across, and then continue the cut. So I'm going ahead and continuing cutting the top and sides until we have this essential base structure for our cabinet here. So this is what it's gonna look like, and I'm going in with some two and a half inch long screws, which don't even require you to pre-drill any holes or anything like that. I absolutely love these, they are the best. I'm going in and I'm drilling three of them into each side of our piece of wood. Now I opted to go in with just like the cheapest pine boards that they had at Home Depot and that's because I'm painting this project so I don't really care how the wood is going to look in the end. So this is the base structure of our piece. Now next what I'm going to do is go ahead and create the cubes. We're going to cut four 13 inch pieces and two 10 inch pieces and they'll be joined together like this diagram here. So the 13 inch pieces are gonna be on top and bottom and the 10 inch is gonna be on the side there. So I'm just screwing them together, going through our 13 inch section into the side of the 10. And we are basically creating a three-sided cube as shown here. You're gonna to wanna to actually create two of these because one's gonna go in the top left corner as shown here. And then one's gonna go in the bottom right-hand corner. And as you can see, the sides are gonna complete the cube. So once they're inside, you're gonna go ahead and screw them in. I used about three screws per side, so I'm going in here and just screwing those together as shown here. I'm flipping it up because it's so much easier to add the screws when it's flipped upward like this. So I'm just adding in the ones on the back side. And this is what it's going to look like once your two cubes are installed, but we do want to add a little bit more support in there. So I'm measuring out the distance from the cube to the opposite side of the bookshelf, which happened to be 17 inches for both sections. So I cut out a 17 inch piece of wood and I'm screwing that in from the outside in and also on the inside of the cube. I'm just going to be adding that shelf there. This just adds a lot of visual interest to the piece and I love how geometric it ended up turning out in the end. So this is what it looks like. You can totally keep it wood if you like that look or stain it, but I wanted to go in and do a little bit of wood filler. So I'm just wood filling every single screw hole. This is why I suggest driving the screws quite low into the wood or at least to where you know once you go in and add the wood filler that it's going to be fully covered when you go back to sand it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that wood filler dry for about an hour and then I'm going back in with a 200 grit sandpaper and sand away any excess. This is going to create a nice smooth finish and almost make it appear as if no screws were even used in the process of creating this piece. So just going through, sanding everything away, and then we're using some of the bare marquee paint. This is from Home Depot as well. I'm literally using the color called black, and I'm going to go through and paint the entire shelf with one coat of this paint because it is such high quality. I literally used one coat, you guys, and it covered perfectly. I also love how the cheaper pine boards from Home Depot show through the texture. I love Love that when you paint over the top of it. I think it adds a nice bit of dimension. So I'm going through and painting the entire shelf now. Allow that to dry and love the fact that you only spent $45 on this project. This third project is kind of unique because it's almost like a customizable piece of furniture. So we're going to be building a base structure and this base structure is going to be composed of these two sides that have these cut out notches in them. And then in the end, these shelves are actually going to be able to slide in and out and be adjusted to however you want them to look. So I ended up using a one by four and a one by six piece of select pine wood. And I'm going in with my one by four first, and I'm going to go ahead and cut to the height that I want to make my structure. So I'm going and making the center support be 36 inches tall. So I cut two pieces at 36 inches. And once those are cut out, we're gonna wanna go ahead and create the same exact notches that we created in the first project. So I found the center point, which was 18 inches, and I'm measuring out from each side. And you're gonna basically create this gap to be wide enough to fit the piece of wood inside of it. So mine was about three quarters of an inch, but do keep in mind that you want it to slide. So I kind of added an extra eighth of an inch on there. So it's just a hair under one inch wide. And the depth of your notch is just gonna be half of the thickness of the board. So this is kind of what we're working with here. This is, if you could imagine, one board from the side view. There's gonna be one notch in the middle, 12 inches spaced apart. Above and below are going to be two other notches. So as you can see here, I'm going in and I'm marking 12 inches up from the first notch that we created in the center, creating the same exact markings that we did, making sure that they are wide enough for our board to slide into. And I'm also gonna be transferring it over to our second piece. And that's because we want them to be very symmetrical. So I'm going to be going Going ahead and flipping it sideways up and clamping it down to the table and I'm going to be doing the same exact technique that I did on the first project. This one is a little bit more 
challenging, I guess you could say, because it's a smaller notch that we're cutting out. It's also a little bit wider, but it's more shallow. So you have to be a little bit careful. And I did go in with my chisel once again to chisel out any excess wood on the inside to create a nice clean notch. And I will also say that this boarding in particular, like the piece of pine that I chose, was a little bit more harder in terms of chiseling it out. It took me a little bit longer. And then the process is pretty repetitive. You're going to repeat this for all six notches, and you're going to have two pieces of wood that look very similar to this. And then we're going to go ahead and cut out our shelves. Now you can cut these to whatever width you want them to be. I opted for 20 inches in length, and I also grabbed the remainder of my original one by four, and I cut two five inch pieces because we're going to be gluing these five inch sections in between our two pieces of notched wood, ensuring that the notches are facing the inside. So as you can see, they're facing the inside there. I'm adding some glue to either side of our little piece there, and then I'm applying a clamp on the end to hold it all together as shown here. You're going to let this dry for about an hour, and I just find the wood glue makes it so much easier to then go in and drill a hole like this because it holds your wood together. Of course, we're not using it as the primary support. We are going to want to add some screws, so I'm starting off with a couple of pilot holes, and then I'm going in with probably about a one and a half inch screw, and I'm just screwing it in a very small one, making sure that I drive it down pretty far. That way, I can then go back in, of course, and apply a little bit of wood filler over the top of those screws. That way, they are nice and hidden in the end. So I'm applying a little bit of wood filler here. As far as the shelves go, I wanted to go ahead and stain these pieces of wood. So I used some espresso colored stain, which I really love for this project. And I went ahead and I gave a generous staining to the front, backs, and sides of all of the shelves because these are going to be able to be kind of interchanged throughout your piece. And then once the wood filler was dried, I of course went back with some sandpaper and sanded off any excess wood filler. I already knew I wanted to paint like the base structure in the middle black. That way it kind of almost had this industrial look to it and maybe even looked a little bit like metal. So I went through and used the same exact black paint as the last project and I painted the entire center section that we created with the black paint except for the grooves. I didn't paint the inside of the grooves because I knew the shelves were going to slide in and out and I didn't want any you know paint to be chipping off or anything like that. So once the paint is all dry you can go ahead and mount the base to the wall. I am just using some screws and I'm screwing directly through the notch because then our shelves of course are going to slide right over the top of any of those screws and hide them and the great thing about this project is that you can alter the shelves as you please and the the total cost was only $23. Okay, you cannot tell me that those projects were not too hard to recreate. I really, really wanted to create a couple of woodworking based projects that were not too hard, that didn't require a ton of tools, a ton of equipment, a ton of material. And I wanted to create projects that were also useful and things that you might want to also recreate for your home and show you how simple it could actually be. Because I know myself, if I was to never go out and, you know, try out woodworking per se, I would never actually do it. And I love being able to just incorporate that into my DIY skill set. And I hope that this also inspires you guys to maybe take on a woodworking project in the future and if woodworking is not for you I hope that this was a fun video for you to watch at least. I think my personal favorite project was definitely the bookshelf just because that's the one project I'm actually keeping in my space. I ended up styling it in the living room and I love the location and position and styling of it so I'm going to be keeping it out there for a while. Now the wall shelf and the little plant stand I'm going to be storing in my Lone Fox room just for future projects or future makeovers so I can incorporate those for sure and I also want to thank the Home Depot so much for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to make sure to link their website below for you guys if you ever need anything for a future home improvement project. The Home Depot has you covered and of course they have so many incredible capabilities which just make the shopping experience so much nicer and easier for you as a customer. So whether you know you need a project calculator, you need an in-store pickup, whatever you need the Home Depot has you covered and also do not forget to check out their app and download it in the app store because it's very convenient when you're shopping in stores. And I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video and I will go ahead and catch you guys in my next one. Have an amazing rest your day and leave a comment below which was your favorite project all right i'll catch you in the next one bye guys